Hi, I'm Tessa and welcome to Little Lady Homestead. I have another change of pace for today's video because I am at my desk and this is a place where lots of planning has taken place over the last couple weeks. And I am very excited because in a couple weeks I am going to begin starting my seeds for my summer garden. This is my second year of gardening. I could maybe say it's my third, but that first year I wasn't very involved. It was mostly Matt's idea to start a garden and just a few raised planters and I was absolutely clueless. <laughs> I am much more comfortable and maybe have a little bit more instincts when it comes to raising animals and I feel kind of inept when it comes to gardening, but I think that it's something that's worth it to learn. I want to be able to feed my family out of the garden at least for the summer and then maybe as time goes on and I get a little bit better at it, I will be able to start preserving a lot of that food for the rest of the year but baby steps. <laughs> so like I said, I'm going to call this my second year of gardening. Last year, which was my first year at this property, I had no idea what I was doing. I jumped in head first and planned this huge garden and really just based it off of advice from people I know who grow in my growing zone and just advice from the internet. And I just took their word for it and jumped in and I think that was a good starting point. I feel like there's a few things that I learned from last year that I at least know that I need to improve on. Maybe I have a solution, maybe I don't, but Shopping for seeds this year, there's a few things that I wanted to change based off of what I found out last year. So today I'm going to hop on the computer, order my seeds, show you what I selected, and kind of an overall view of what I want to plant this year. So I have a list of a few mistakes that I made last year and I have an idea of how I want to fix each of them. And so I'm going to go through and tell you the mistakes that I made. And then maybe once I go through the seeds that I'm choosing, I can talk a little bit more about the solutions. So the first thing that probably killed me right off the bat was that I didn't plant my cool weather crops early enough. I didn't really understand the concept that well of a cool weather crop. I know that it sounds like self-explanatory, but I started them early. I think I started them the second week of March, which is okay, but then they sat in their little seed starting cups for probably six weeks, which was horrible. And then I didn't really understand the idea of hardening them off. And so I would send them on field trips outside on just like a tray and I didn't have seed starting trays last year. So I actually use little paper cups <laughs> and I put them on trays and then Anytime the wind would blow by, there went my seeds. And so those poor seeds probably didn't have enough space. They were root bound and half of them died by being knocked over in the wind. So if I had just understood that, yes, I could have transplanted them much earlier. I didn't have to wait until my last frost date. Then they probably, at least more of them would have made it in the ground. So this year I'm going to start them early and actually transplant them when I'm supposed to. The second mistake is that I didn't start enough warm weather crops inside and I didn't get them out right after my frost date. I think a lot of those got lost in the shuffle of taking my cups on a tray outside and then letting the wind blow them away. And so I basically had to start over with seeds straight in the ground once my last frost date passed. And then a big one, I didn't consider how many plants of each species I actually wanted. I just got the seed packets and I thought, okay, well one packet is, you know, not that many, but I want to grow a lot. So I'm going to grow all of them. And I think I went for quantity over quality <laughs> of gardening. And so I just had seeds everywhere. And like I said, I didn't take care of them and most of them died. And then my last major mistake I think I made, like I said, I based off the varieties of plants that I got just off of what other people liked. And 
I didn't consider or I didn't know at the time that you could save seeds, that you don't have to buy them every year, that you can save the seeds and save them for the next year. And that is good because you don't have to buy them again, but also year after year, if you keep saving the seeds, they get better and better acclimated to your specific climate. So here I'm in zone 6A, but we're also in the mountains and we have our own specific microclimate within 6A. So if I can get varieties and grow them here where they're really well acclimated to that microclimate, then I'm going to have more yields in the future. So it's a win-win. I wanna go down that path, but last year, almost everything that I grew was a hybrid. And if you try to save the seeds from the hybrid, either you won't get as good of germination, or if you do get germination and the plants grow, it's not going to be the same plant as the parent was. It's going to be more like one of the grandparents and it won't be true to what you bought. So this year I wanna focus a lot more on buying heirloom seeds. And so that's one of the main things that I want to show you today. So I'm going to jump in and look at the first few seeds that I bought. The first purchase that I made this year was for onions because before I know it, it's going to be time to start planting them. And I had a hard time finding onions this year. Not that it wasn't available, I just thought that it was expensive. <laughs> the places that I usually looked at. Last year I purchased my seeds from Johnny Select Seeds and I got my onions there as well. I got Patterson, which are here, and also Walla Walla onions. And so one unit, which is about 50 to 60 plants, was $20.99, which doesn't seem horrible, <laughs> but I wanted to look around to see if I could get a better price. And I found these candy onions from Dixondale Farms, and it's the same bundle size, about 30, or sorry, 50 to 75 plants per bunch, and this is only $15.50. So I ended up buying two bunches, and I think there was a discount too, so I only paid $23 total, including, I think shipping was free. So that was a good deal there, but that was the only thing that I bought from them, just those candy onions. Also, I did look to see, this year I learned that there's a difference between long day onions and short day onions, and I am intermediate for my latitude, so these candy onions are perfect for my growing conditions, hopefully. So fingers crossed. So next I got my potatoes from Holland Bulb Farms, and I looked everywhere for potato seeds. Because again, last year I bought my seeds at Johnny's and I think I was okay with the price when I looked at it, but they're back ordered until April 1st and I would like to get my potatoes in a little bit sooner than that, hopefully the middle of March. And these Kennebec potatoes, they are the same ones that my neighbors grow and they have really good results with them. So if they have good results, I might as well try it too. I didn't want to wait until April 1st, so I found them at Holland Bulb and I actually can't remember when they're sending them. Let's see if... Okay, it looks like from my confirmation email, they're going to send them at the end of March. In any case, I have used Holland Bulb Farms before. That's where I bought all of my flower bulbs and I had good results with them. So I'm hoping that this will work out. It was on a really big sale. This was only $11 for five pounds and on Johnny's it was $23 for five pounds. So hopefully that works out well. My other potatoes that I got I got more Yukon Gold potatoes, which I grew this year. Same thing, these were only $11 for five pounds, and Johnny's, again, it was about $23. So I'm happy that I found a deal there. And then lastly, while I was here, I always throw maybe a seed packet of flowers on here. I love Bells of Ireland. I would always get those from the farmer's market when I was a kid, so I'm excited to grow them this year. Now for my really big purchase that I made, and probably not so much on price, but mostly just items, I ordered from Everwild Farms, and I had never actually 
heard of Everwild. So again, fingers crossed, hopefully they all turn out okay. But I was really looking for a wide variety of heirloom vegetable seeds. I really want to try my hand or do a better job of saving my seeds, and I can only save the seeds if I have heirloom varieties. And last year, that was not even on my radar at all. So this year, I want to get as many uh, varieties that I can that are heirloom, and I can save the seeds. So on here... The first thing I got was these red mammoth fodder beets, and these obviously aren't for us. <laughs> I think it would be fine to eat, but they're mostly for animal feed, and these are going to be for the pigs. So I got, I think, a quarter pound. I believe I got a quarter pound of these beets, and we are going to grow a ton. I have about an 80 by 100 foot garden area planned out, not prepared at all, but planned out that I'm going to be planting vegetables for our pigs this year. So that's the first thing that's going in the pig garden. And then I love green beans. I accidentally bought bush beans. <laughs> kind of the purpose of me buying beans was to go with pole beans because I want to trellis them and have those really pretty arches to walk under and pick the green beans from. But these are bush beans. I heard great things about Blue Lake. I'm sure they're going to be delicious, but I didn't see that they were bush beans until later. But I also did get Kentucky pole beans. Again, this will help me make those beautiful arches, which I'm very excited about. My kids are resistant to eating green beans. They love green beans from the can, as do I, but they push back on me <laughs> on fresh green beans. Unless they're fresh and not cooked for some reason, they like it that way. So maybe we can just eat fresh green beans and they'll be okay with it. And then broccoli... This is kind of what started me to decide to order seeds now. I want to get my broccoli in much sooner than I did last year. So I got two heirloom varieties. I got the Waltham 29 and I just got a packet. And then I got the DeCicio broccoli and oh, I didn't add it on here, but I also got the Calabrese broccoli as well. So three different varieties. We'll see wh which one works best for our area, and I'll save the seeds for those next year. Then for carrots, I got the Tender Sweet and Danvers. Carrots are our favorite out of the garden. Actually, no. I would say that snap peas are our favorite out of the garden, and I still have a huge bag of snap pea seeds from last year, so I just needed to get these carrots, and then we'll have our favorites covered. This year, I'm trying new cucumbers. I definitely have moved towards like English style cucumbers and they need to be sweet. They just absolutely need to be sweet. So I made sure to look for burpless and I really wanted something to say in the description that it was sweet and not bitter and this says it's nearly acid free. So fingers crossed these are tasty. They will be high yielders and we will love them. I also am trying out okra for the first time this year. Being from the West Coast, okra isn't really a thing, but here in the South, okra is definitely a thing. So I'm excited to try it. Hopefully, again, the kids like it and it can be a staple. Okay, now on to another favorite. <laughs> I didn't do very well last year growing green peas. We have just been buying frozen green peas from the grocery store, but my kids eat them as treats. Even when my babies were teething, they would eat frozen um, peas <laughs> and that would help their mouths. So even from the tiniest age, they're used to eating green peas. So I got three different varieties I'm not sure. They're supposed to be sweet. They're supposed to be productive. So we'll see how they go. Next, I got some peppers. And I got some Anaheim chili peppers and some habanero peppers. Last year, I think I had jalapenos, which I still have seeds for, and just a pepper mix. And 
I think I had, what did I have? Poblano maybe? And I made salsa and we we're still enjoying that salsa. I only made it 12 jars though, so we are going to run out far sooner than I hope we would. <laughs> so we definitely have to have a lot and I need to put up a lot of jars for next year. And then pumpkins. I had to get these huge pumpkins. <laughs> so look at, look at that. I'm so excited to have huge pumpkins. So I don't think I have enough room to put this in my normal vegetable bed. Last year I put it in the berry patch. So we'll see where I put those, but we definitely need to grow some massive pumpkins. And for tomatoes, there are only two kinds of tomatoes that I really knew that I wanted. I always eat Roma tomatoes. I love them. And I thought that these were interesting, the Mountain Princess. Again, these are all heirloom, uh, but they reach a pretty good weight and they're mildly flavored and they're supposed to grow in the mountains. So we'll see if they like it here in the Blue Ridge Mountains and hopefully, you know, we eat them. All right, and then I did get some butternut squash. So far, my kids have not liked butternut squash, but again, I could just give them to the pigs if we don't eat them. I've never tried acorn winter squash, but it's another winter squash that I wanted to try so that I could store them for later in the season, again, to feed the pigs. And then we got some watermelons. I did not have luck with watermelons this year. We got two watermelons, and they were probably the size of a softball. Oh, but they were delicious. <laughs> so I am hoping, I'm going to just keep trying. It doesn't hurt to try. Just different varieties, see what works for our area. And then the last things I got here were these early summer crooked neck summer squash and the prolific straight neck summer squash. These are going in the pig garden. I know that these are just so prolific. They yield such high amounts. So I'm excited to have those in the pig garden so that they can be eating all summer. And then my family does like zucchini, even though I don't like it. If they like it, I'll eat it. So we got a packet of that. So even though I used Johnny Seeds as an example for where I bought seeds last year, but I thought they were a little bit expensive and wanted to try something else, I still came back to them. Johnny's was highly recommended from a few different people. So that's where I started last year, and I ended up going back to get some of the things I couldn't get at the other places I ordered from. So even though I said that I want to grow as many heirloom varieties as I can, I think corn and probably cucumbers will be an exception because we really need sweet corn, like the sweetest corn. So I wanted to find the SH2, the super sugary, sweet enhanced <laughs> corn, and those are hybrids. So I won't be able to save the seeds. I'll have to buy them every year, but that's okay. The three that I went with are the Solstice, the Signature XR, the Extra Tender, and the American Dream. These just seem like a wide variety of growing periods and just they said all the right things when it came to sweetness <laughs> and they had good reviews. So we'll see how they do. I did not do well growing my corn this year, but I'm going to plant a lot more of it next year, give them more space, give them more fertilizer. And again, just cross my fingers because we do love corn on the cob so much. Next, I ordered some tomatillos. We love, or we say, I say we, <laughs> Matt and I love Chili Verde so much. We love Chili Verde enchiladas and salsa, so I want to grow a ton of these, and I'm really looking forward to it. Next are these San Marzano tomatoes, which if I can any tomatoes, I've never grown tomatoes. I don't know how it'll go, but if I actually get a yield that I can can, I've heard that these are the best to can. And then going back to Matt's peppers <laughs> for the salsa, um, he wanted ancho um, poblano peppers. In a lot of recipes that he's found, he said, oh, they need Anaheim or um, ancho, dried ancho poblano peppers. So I got those for him. I'm sure we'll come up with a million uses. Even though I don't really like spicy things, I'm willing to do that for him. 
And then my cucumbers, I got another cucumber variety. This is the sashimi, which it's a very long cucumber. And it's supposed to be crisp with, it's just supposed to be really sweet. And again, this is the really long English variety. Well, it's, it's Asian, uh, but it grows those English type cucumbers. So I'm excited about that. I love cucumbers. The kids love cucumbers. What kid doesn't like cucumbers? And then let's see, pickling cucumbers. I did pickle. I did put up some pickle jars last year that actually two of my kids really like and I love. So I will do that again next year. And then the sweet potato slips. This is another thing that I ha had a hard time finding. I ended up just going with Johnny's because it really wasn't that much cheaper to get it anywhere else. And again, I trust them. So that's kind of what was left over that I needed for my vegetable haul. But the very last purchase that I made was more so for fun. <laughs> I did have a coupon code with them that I got a big discount. And I love zinnias. I love them so much. Last year I planted, I think, two packets of zinnias. And they were the staple in my garden. Nothing else grew so very well, but my zinnias bloomed all summer long up until the frost came and took most of them away. So I'm definitely going to plant more zinnias. I saved the zinnias, or I saved the seeds from the zinnias that I grew last year, which was just kind of a mix with these colors and the green queen zinnias, but I need more. <laughs> so I got white zinnias, red zinnias, the scabiosa zinnias, which I absolutely love. They're so pretty. I got these and I got the Zinderella are really similar to those Scabiosa or they might be the same. I'm not sure. And then the cupcake mix are kind of the same. And then I got these uh, Oklahoma salmon color. They're really pretty and some yellow ones. So this is for fun. I will definitely plant them in my flower garden, but I'm already thinking that I might plant them in a few different places around the property just because they make me happy. So I think it was worth, you know, the, the $30. I'm really excited about it. So needless to say, I am pretty excited about this growing season. And I have actually already gotten most of the seeds in that I ordered. And I am just starting to organize my seed starting system, which here's a little sneak peek. <laughs> It's a lot of work, but I'm hoping that I'm close enough in my approximations when everything should be planted and transplanted that I will be able to just reuse nearly the same system next year and just make little tweaks here and there and I won't need to put in as much work next time. So that's what I'm working on right now. That will probably be my next video, kind of how I set up my seed starting system and what my schedule is going to look like over the next couple months. So I hope you enjoy this video and stay tuned for the next one. And here's crossing our fingers for the growing season that I get some good yields for my family and for the pig garden that I'm going to plant. And hopefully I learn a lot and just get better each year. Well, thank you so much for watching Little Lady Homestead and I'll see you in my next video.